Yay Networks. All right, y'all. And yes, today is another beautiful day in the neighborhood, and we are still neighbors. So without further ado, honey, we're going to be talking about mental health today, first of all. And I'm so glad we're talking with the, uh, with this wonderful doctor, because everything is dealing with mental health in, in this day and time. So I'm not going to get into it, because I'm going to let her come on, and we're going to talk about it. So without further ado, let's bring on Dr. Shayna. Dr. Shayna, how are you this morning? I am amazing, Carrie. How are you? I'm doing fine. So now this is better. You know, the technology, baby, that deals with your damn mental health, too. Yes. So, so Jesus. But anyway, Dr. Shane, you know, we're going to just get into this because this is a subject, first of all, honey, that I love and, and definitely, you know, it applies to me more than anybody else. But let me, talk, let me get my glasses first. You know, we're getting old, baby. Let me get my glasses. So I can get see. your glasses, Jerry. Okay. See, the glasses are worse. I need to... <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess because I'm, I'm doing this from a different gadget. So, but I'm, I'm going to work with it though, honey. I can see you, damn it. All right. So, Dr. Shane, okay. First of all, everything, honey, in the news today, girl, is mental health. Girl, every time somebody shoot up the damn city, yeah. shoot up a store, shoot up a church, shoot up their house, rob a store, it's mental health. So, I was asking the question, though, about it. Because my thing is this. Um, I know we went through the pandemic through Corona and all this other stuff. And so a person told me, they said, well, Gary, one of the reasons why we do so much mental health is because of that. Because, you know, people was locked up in their houses and um, people was dealing with people that they didn't want to deal with. Husband and wife didn't realize they was married for 30 years. They're like, I don't like you. And all that <laughs> stuff. I mean, Dr. Shana, give it to us, honey. Tell us about this mental health situation. Sure. That's a loaded question, first of all, Gary. So we'll try, we'll try to walk it down just a little bit. Everything about our life affects our mental health, first of all. We do have to be clear about that. Yes, the pandemic made so much worse. So while we were in the pandemic, we lost a lot of freedoms. Um, there was high anxiety, um, lots of fear, things that were unknown, uh, lots of stress. Folks lost jobs financially. People were struggling. So it was hitting us from every which way, every side. So it made it a lot worse. And for some communities, a lot worse than others. OK, um, yeah. and what has happened is as we are coming out of the pandemic, what we are seeing is, a, is what clinicians in the field are beginning to call a mental health pandemic where folks are struggling mentally that never even really had significant mental health issues before. But now they're showing up because of all the pressure of the pandemic. The problem is if folks don't address it, it does not get better, Gary. It only gets worse. Yeah. So tell me this, Dr. Shannon. So there's a stigma, honey, around the black community, um, you know, regarding mental health. Because you know, honey, back in the day, hold on, let me get this. Back in the day, girl, you know, especially, you know, with us in the African-American community, girl, if you had a problem, a mental health problem, honey, that girl, he, he just a little touched. And they had you in the damn back room, honey. Nobody want to talk to Uncle Joe because, you yep. know, it was a little touchy stuff. It's amazing. Now, now, all of a sudden, like I said earlier, all this stuff is just being pushed up to the forefront. But let me say this, though. I tell people all the time, especially some of my coworkers, because, you know, they are everybody had ADD or we just had another... I was diagnosed, damn it. I'm bipolar. I was diagnosed with mental health. I take lithium every damn day. Right. So my thing is, I want to know what's the doggone excuse for them. To me, if you're not clinically diagnosed, you ain't damn mentally challenged. You <laughs> just so what's the deal with that? So here's the thing: there are a whole lot of folks, Gary, walking around that actually have mental health illnesses or mental health issues, and they are not diagnosed. Okay. Yeah, exactly. so if you don't have a diagnosis, don't mean you're not suffering, right? There's a lot of us who never go see a mental health professional. We won't go to a psychiatrist. We won't because of the stigma you talked about earlier. There's a lot of shame in our community. Yeah. We're taught what happens in our house does what, Gary? Stay in the house. That's right. And you get a whole whooping if you tell somebody what happened. Yeah, there. right. And we're not trying to get no whoopings, Gary. So folks got to actually go find out. Get in a, it's like going to the doctor to get a physical yeah. Saying, okay. Let's start, let's let's normalize that and let's do that to make sure we're okay. Okay. Now, but and you because I mean, like when I was diagnosed, but it's amazing though, Dr. Shayna, people don't really, I mean, when I was diagnosed, it was just 
Cause I guess they back people really still know it wasn't called bipolar when I was diagnosed. Because the, first of all, one doctor told my parents that um I um I um I was um how, how did they put it? They said um I had hypoglycemia. Because huh? some of the same symptoms, because what I was going through, could I never get God looked like I was craving sugar. One thing, I went to cafeteria at school and took a dog on cinnamon roll. And stuff, and that had happened. Then, so my parents took me to my dad and said, Gary, are you smoking weed? I'm like, no. And you know, so uh, they died, they said hypoglycemia. So, my mom, I never get baby. Every morning I was getting breathless. My mom was cooking me a good breakfast before I went to school. Then, you know, I um, moved um, from Port Arthur to Houston. Okay. Went to Houston. I had another episode. My friend found me balled up in the corner in my apartment, wrapped up in a blanket. So, honey, they didn't know what to do, so they took me to the hospital. I remember it so vividly, Dr. Shana. I woke up, honey, I was on the damn psych floor. So, honey, so the doctor, you know, came, so the doctor, you know, they came and they did their diagnosis and stuff like that and what happened. And that's when they called it, he said it was um, bipolar. So I, um, so I stayed in the hospital um, for three months. Wow. They drained out the damn insurance, honey. I stayed in the hospital for three months. And then when I got out the hospital and went home, girl, I had another episode. I ran upstairs to my parents, told them that the monsters was chopping me in the brain. Because, girl, the medicine I was on, I was on Cogen, Eflin, and Narvain. I was on so many different medicines and stuff until finally um, my uh, neighbor, you know, you always have a neighbor girl that have kind of have a problem. Mm -hmm. So the neighbor that told my parents, they said, y'all need to take Gary um, to MHMR. Because when I told some of my coworkers about that on the air recently, huh, what is it? Because it was mental health, mental retardation. That's yep. what the book was called. Yeah, and honey, the doctor there, honey, we did a whole new reevaluation. Nevertheless, that's when they came up, girl, and they put me on lithium. Gotcha. And I've been on lithium for over thirty years. Wow, so, wow, yeah. And but it was no shame. I am not ashamed to talk because damn it, I'm not crazy. If crazy look like me, bitch, I, excuse my French. Everybody <laughs> needs to be crazy then. <laughs> okay. Well, Gary, let me say this. First of all, thirty years ago, yes, it looked a lot different. We know a whole lot more now than we knew then. And I actually am in Houston and have worked at MHMRA. So I know exactly what you're talking about. That we process that your family had to go through. And good for you. You were one of those that was fortunate that you had family that was trying to find out what was going on with you. There are a lot of families that were just saying, like you said earlier, he touched, leave him over there to himself. We're not going to do nothing about him. And, you know, and that's what we're going to do. Lock him up in a room and we're going to keep moving like this didn't happen. But good for you. Your family did take the time to actually find out what was going on and get a solution for you that has saved your whole life. It really has, I know. Yes, and the good thing about it, though, Dr. Shana, and not just my parents, hell, I did too. Because yep. I never get, I have aunts, I have a couple of aunts, and they told my parents, ooh, honey, y'all might as well go ahead and get Gary a check, baby, because he ain't going to oh, never yeah. do right. He ain't going to be well. And my mom never told him, honey, wherever there's a check to be gotten, Gary going to get it. So, okay. honey, I did not sit down and wallow, even though. A couple of times I started taking my meds, I said, there ain't nothing wrong with me. But honey, the little, little situation, the little episode that they call it, yes. came back again, baby. I'm like, honey, uh-uh. I didn't want to deal with that stuff. So I'm like, you know, it's sad, you know, no Dr. Shane, that it happens to a lot of people and stuff. And then, you know, we in our community, you know, mm -hmm. honey, we pray on it. Oh, we're going to pray, honey. Yeah. But what we forget is that's why the Lord put the damn doctor here to help you. Exactly. Too many of us use religion or spirituality as an excuse not to deal with our mental health issues. And we will pray about it. We'll say, you know, we're we telling folks that, that means we don't have faith. If we go see a counselor that we don't have faith and we're going against God. Well, God said, get some good counsel, didn't he? Jesus had folks that supported him on his way. So how come we can't do the same thing? It's an excuse that gets you, but it's not valid. It's not. No. And my thing, and Dr. Trina, I love kind of going to my therapist. Honey. It helped me so much. Cause let me tell you something, but people got to realize you get to sit down and talk to this person, uh -huh. you know, and that's between you and that person. And yep. you and, and and you you get resolution. I mean, because I mean we walk around here now, honey. So many people, that's why so many people walking around here now angry mad and doing all this because you know, we just it's amazing. It just goes back to our his, back to history, I guess you could say. That, you know, it just said but, but I think more people definitely need to realize that there's nothing wrong with a therapist. And I'm not saying you got to put it on the flagpole, but I mean, you could share. Because when you share and talk about it, damn it, it helps more people. 
It does. So so here's the thing. I, I believe that you can have Jesus and a therapist and it's perfectly okay. And yeah. You're better off with both of them, right? Like we don't yeah. need one behind. And and a lot of people, Gary, won't even go to therapy until they're in a crisis. And not saying that that's not a good time to go, but you don't yeah. have to go to the house is on fire to go. You no. can check in just to make sure. Am I okay? I'm dealing with some stress. I'm dealing with a relationship. I'm not sure what to do here. Therapists are very helpful in all very, of the capacity. All of them. Very helpful. Because it helped me out a lot. Of, it helped me out dealing with family, too, yeah. as well. Because, you know, I used to be the type of person I walked around with everything on my damn shoulders. Honey, once I started talking to a therapist and that therapist started helping me out, so you know, telling you some things, how to relieve that situation. Yeah. It is a wonderful thing. Because I used to be, I was almost like a, a, a man. I was like a doorman. People used to walk over me, baby, not no more. Uh uh. <laughs> you ain't used to walk over me no more. And I'm and it's all done, you know, you do it, you know, where it's uh, diplomatic, where you don't I'm not knocking down nobody curse you out, but I'm just letting you know. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And with that being said, women are the same way. Most women walk around want to be superwoman, honey, and and uh, I'm every woman, it's all in me, honey. No, women need help. Men need help just as well. Now, you know what, Gary? I'm very partial to the sister, right? I happen to be yeah. one. So yeah. I'm nervous, and everything I do is to make sure my sisters are okay. And we yeah. are literally around here killing ourselves, Gary. We think that we have to be the strong black woman for everybody. We got to carry everything. We got to fix yeah. all our problems. And half of y'all didn't even ask us to fix the problem. We just fixed it because we saw that it was broken. But didn't nobody ask your sis to do that? So we yeah. kill ourselves thinking that we have to, stressing ourselves out. Our yeah. mind, we can't think clearly for ourselves because we're thinking for you. We can't focus at work because we're thinking about some children or the husband mm -hmm. or other family members that we fix it, everybody's stuff, but we forgot ourselves. We got to get back to self-care, Gary. That is one of the number one tools we can use to help us with our mental health. And my sisters, we got to do a better job. Ain't nobody coming to save you, sis. You wait so on No. Uh, and you know what, though, Dr. Shane, I want to you, so, I mean, I think about it, which is what... Everybody needs to think about more so, like you said, the women, honey. Girl, what they tell you when you're on a plane, honey? Joe, and the plane ass. going down. Put the mask on you first, first, baby, not the child. Yes. You say you first, then you help somebody. And that's what people realize what we really we need to do, but we don't because, like you said, and a lot of things deal with our upbringing, too. Because, you know, yeah. our upbringing just had a lot to do with that. And this is why things happen the way it happens, you know, with us, you know, mentally and what have and stuff. So, it does. It does. And I think we're in a position right now, especially coming out of COVID, because mm -hmm. we had to take care of so much. Think about it. At the home, if you had children, mamas was dealing with them children. You know what I mean? Daddy yep. was been at home, but you already know they would walk past their daddy and go right to their mama. He was sitting right there. Right there. Right there. And asking her to fix everything. What we going to eat? I need to do this homework. I can't figure out how to get to Jim because Jim was in the living room. I don't know what to do next. They asking her. So we were taxed times a million in the pandemic. And the sisters, we, we tired. We tired. So it's time for us to take care of ourselves here. This is why I say this. The cup is for me. The sauce is for them. Fill your cup first, sis. Hold on. Your overflow. That's what that's I That's right, honey. That's right. So, Dr. Shane, so, and also, what do you do? So, and, well, so, and all in all, so what do you think, Andrew, what, what some of the remedies are? What should people should take from this? And what should men, women, children, what should people take from this on their mental health? How could we just, you think if one day we're going to all just be um, perfectly um, just sane people, so to speak? You know, so what? What is it? I mean, should they? I mean, should you take a walk? Should you? Um, I mean, um, go to bed early. I mean, what? What can we do? There's a lot that we can do, Gary. So I usually give folks a couple of quick points, right? I, I believe first you need to check in with yourself every day to see where are you, because every day not the same. Some days you may wake up feeling amazing, other days you may not. So on a scale of zero to ten, how am I feeling? How is my emotional self? How am I today? Write it down. And then number two, the next question you want to ask yourself is, what do I need today, right, to support myself mentally, physically, emotionally? Maybe you do need a walk. Maybe you just need a mental health day, Gary. I ain't going in today. Maybe mm -hmm. you need to take um, a vacation. Maybe you need to drink more water. Maybe you just need a 26-minute nap, and that's all you need to get yourself going. But check yeah. in with yourself. And here's the third thing I suggest that we do is be grateful. Start a day with gratitude. Because when you focus on gratitude, you can shift your mental space. You can shift your emotion and your energy, which will actually put you in a better space 
to go through your day. So those are just three quick things that you can do at the top of every single day, folks. Mm -hmm. Man, you know, it doesn't matter who you are to check in with your mental health and then make some decisions from there. Yeah. And you know what, no, Dr. Shannon, and this is something I know ain't nobody going to do this because everybody, when I tell them I do this, ah. but you know, to clear my head, honey, I live in Georgia. Okay. I drive to Texas once a month to go to my house in Texas. To, to, okay. I, that's my decompression. Okay. It's only a 10 hour drive. And let me tell you something. I clear my head, Dr. Shannon. I cry, I talk on the phone and I listen to my music. I love that. And, and, and that works for me. And I, I look like I'm going to be doing it next week. I can't wait because I'm like, it's, it's that time. You know, I I, after you work all week and Monday and all that stuff, just in, I, I have to do that. And that's what I do for me. And once I get home, I mean, Dr. Shane, and my head is clear. I could take on anything. I love that, Gear. So, to your point, one of the other things that I suggest, I have a book called Self Care is the New Sexy, and it has plays in it to the point of what you're saying. What are some of those really specific things? that we can do to actually support ourselves. Taking a long drive is a great one. One of the other things I suggest, Gary, is what about your morning routine? Do you know your morning routine helps with your mental health of having something, meditation, breathing, um, exercise, drinking plenty of water, like all of those things support your mental health 100%. So those are just some other tips that folks can think about of what you can do to help support yourself. And you know what one of mine, and it's putting chills through me while you're talking about I get up in the morning and do you know, honey, I get in the shower because I, I don't take my shower at night. I take it in the morning. That damn water just, honey, just it just gives me uh, an exhilaration. I just feel so good once a while because I be feeling hard. I'm like, hell, I don't feel like getting up going to work. But yeah. as soon as I get in the shower, honey, that shower just makes me feel so much better. And yeah. then, you know, it gives me a little pep. Then once I get to work, honey, and, and unwind, I'm good. Exactly. I am good. I love that. I love that. That's what yeah. gets me up in the morning. Good, good suggestion. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, but but it's just something though. But I, I just said I just think um, you know, we definitely need to do that, honey. People need to do it, honey. I mean, you know, I mean, we can't make everybody, honey, um, mentally healthy. But I mean, the ones that we can, honey, I mean, you just definitely put it out there and do that. And to your point, you you're not responsible for anybody else's well be. If they grown, they're responsible for themselves. So this is why, to the point we said earlier, take care of yourself. That's the biggest gift you give anybody because we think when we're caring for everyone else, it's better for them, but it's not. If you're not okay, your helping of, for them is not going to be that great. But if you're well mentally, physically, spiritually, all of those things, then you're a better um, assistant, a better servant, a better whatever it is you show up to be every day in your world. So taking care of you is the first step, I say, Gary, in all of it. Yeah. But then, though, but Dr. Shane, honey, if I'm... <laughs> My memory served me, right? but hell, back in the day, if we was oh, I'm taking care of me. You were selfish. Oof. <laughs> now, see, I want somebody to tell me I'm selfish because you know what I'm gonna tell them, Gary. What? Thank you. Thank okay. you for noticing that I loved me enough to do something to take care of me. I'm so glad you saw it, and you will reap the benefit of, of me being selfish. See, we gotta relanguage what that means, folks. Yeah. A, a dagger. They weaponize it against us, but we get to stay selfish is not a negative because I no. am doing something to support myself. So selfish by definition is true, but it's not negative. Yeah, I'm selfish. And I yeah. and and my self-care is sacred as well, too, and it's necessary. And you'll thank me for doing it later. Okay. So tell me, so Dr. Shane, I mean, so can how can um these wonderful um viewers reach you, honey? I mean, so uh, do you have a practice? What city are you on? What state you're in? So I am in Houston, Texas. I am not oh, actually Houston. practicing as a clinician anymore. I'm an executive wellness coach. And so they can absolutely reach me uh, I'm on, on social media, Instagram, on TikTok. I am Dr. Shana. You can visit me online at selfcareisthenewsexy.com. That's where my brand new book is. Um, and you can find me in all of those places. And I'm here to support women who need to be well. We need to be well, Gary. We can't do it alone. So I got you hey. back. Exactly. And here's the baby. That's my city, honey. Yeah. I, love, I lived in A.L.E. for like six years. Oh, okay. But, but that was back in the day, honey. That's what, and that's what, you know, believe it, and that's where I was first, you know, went through with my um bipolar, honey, in Houston, honey. So, yep, I love it. I was in Houston, actually, about a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. I love it. I always talk about every night and then moving back there, honey. But um, it, it, it was, it, it, it was. I know I could never recapture what I had when I was there. But honey, that's my city. Are you from Houston? 
I'm actually Gary from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm a sub. Oh, you from Memphis? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. We, uh, we love Memphis. Me? Oh, groovy. Well, never let well, listen to Dr. Shane. I thank you so much, honey, for stopping by. I'm glad you came by, honey. And hopefully and pray for honey that somebody's gonna get something from today. And like you said, if they want to reach you, let's do it again. They can reach you again at you can reach me um on social media at I am Dr. Shana, or you can get a free kit, a free gift. I got a free gift for him, Gary. Can I give him something for free? Yeah. So yeah. I have a meditation that is amazing for your capacities in your morning routine, the one you need to start. Go to selfcareistheanswer.com. Selfcareistheanswer.com. Get your free meditation, your gift from Dr. Shane. All right. Well, Dr. Shane, I want you to have a great day and a better tomorrow, honey. And, honey, we're going to get it together eventually, y'all, because right now, honey, the world needs you because with all this um, mental health, everything. Oh, let me say this to you before we go. So, yeah, it's just something that's popped up in my head. You need to call um, Job Morant. He said, I need to call him. <laughs> yes. He need help. He got some, he got some mental problems, honey. Blaine says, so good. You are a god dog on multi-millionaire, and you playing with guns. Doesn't make any sense. It don't make no sense, honey. So I just thought I'd throw it out there. But anyway, thanks again, uh, Dr. Shayna, honey, for stopping by, honey. And and, and we're going to, honey, be talking to you, honey. And good luck to you in your endeavor. And get out there, honey, and just help the heal the world. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. All right. All right, y'all. That was Dr. Shayna, honey. I mean, mental health is definitely, honey, we need help. And we definitely need mental health because more people out there are doing some things that are just not too mental. So, honey, Dr. Shayna could definitely help you out there with that. So, you can go to all her sites where she told you to go to and pick up her book, honey. And, you know, definitely, we're going to, honey, get it together one day. All right, y'all. Thank you so much, honey, for stopping in. And, you know, you all are so beautiful. And um, as they say, honey, Felice Navidad, I should I tell as I say, Felice Navidad and have a great day and be beautiful. <laughs>